What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys 50 new features and changes found in the brand new watchOS 7 Beta 1. And if you guys missed my videos on iOS 14 and iPadOS 14, all the features and changes and those software updates, I will leave both of those videos linked up in the cards above and also down in the description below. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the new features and changes here in watchOS 7. I will be using the Apple Watch Series 5, and I also will be comparing it to watchOS 6 on my Apple Watch Series 4 throughout this video. So first off, we finally have sleep tracking with the Apple Watch. So watchOS 7 and iOS 14 bring sleep tracking. Now you do have to set this up in the health application at first in iOS 14. So if you go into the health application right here and then go into sleep, this is where you can go ahead and set everything up. And you can even see I have graphs right here showing the average time in bed and things like that. You have your schedule right here and you can go ahead and click on that to edit it. This is what the new screen looks like for setting your wake up time and your bedtime. Also down here, we have the wake up alarm, the sound, snooze, all those things right there. And how this works on the Apple Watch is basically when your alarm goes off, you will get a more quiet alarm than your iPhone alarm. And you also get a lot of haptic presses, a lot of haptic vibrations on your wrist that will wake you up. And on the Apple Watch, if we scroll down, you can see we have the analysis right here for your time of sleep and your last 14 days, a little graph right there. Now also, if you go into our settings, scroll all the way down to sleep right here, we have sleep mode, and then also right here, we have charging reminders. So it says Apple Watch can remind you to charge before bedtime and notify you when it's fully charged. So that's definitely something you want to have enabled if you are going to be using your Apple Watch for sleep tracking, which I would assume most of you guys will. It's a great feature that's really gonna help you see how much or how little you're sleeping at night. And then if you don't wanna use this watch for sleep tracking, you have that option right there. So the charging reminders is going to be super beneficial and you guys will see this with time. I've absolutely loved this feature, but basically this is what it looks like on your phone. So here's what it says when your Apple Watch is fully charged. It gives you a notification on your lock screen or you know, in your notification center, it says right here, Brandon's Apple Watch is fully charged. So we never got any type of notification like that in the past, and now we can see that. So like if you just woke up and you're getting ready for work or whatever, you will actually now see when your watch is fully charged, which can be very, very helpful. Now, the next thing I'm sure you guys already noticed by now, this is the new watch face for watch OS 7. So it's called Chronograph Pro as you can see right there. And then also when I go in to edit, you can see this is all new as well. So I'm gonna bring watchOS 6 in over here. watchOS 6 is gonna be on the left, watchOS 7 on the right. So if you go ahead and haptic press right here, 3D press, you can see the customize screen is different now in watchOS 7. So instead of customize, it's now edit. And then also when we go ahead and click on edit or customize, you can see things are going to be a lot different. So let's start off with the time scale right here. So first off, you can see we no longer have those dots up top in watchOS 7. So that looked a little bit clunky in watchOS 6. That would basically show how many different things we could run through and change. We don't have that in watchOS 7. It just shows them up there. You can kind of see the preview of the next one to come when you swipe over. And now when you scroll through the style, it'll actually show at the bottom, it'll change every time. So you can see 60 second, 30 second, six second, three second. Whereas in watchOS 6, it would basically just give you a visualization. It wouldn't actually tell you, you know, what you're changing on the watch face. And then if we scroll over to the color, you can see here we have a new look for the color as well when we're customizing our watch face right here. So in watchOS 7, we have like a color palette over here on the right. So you can see all the colors to come, which is really nice and then it shows the name of that color down in the bottom middle. Whereas in watchOS 6, it would just show, you know, that color right there up in the top middle of the watch, and it would not give you any kind of palette or anything like that. You would just run through these colors and it would show you what they are, that's it. And then if we scroll over to the complications, we also get an all new look for complications in watchOS 7. So in watchOS 6, you would just scroll through on the complications to change it like so, and you would kind of get, you know, dark sky, it would kind of show you what it is, cycle tracking, city mapper, it would show you what it is in text right there, but that's it, you wouldn't go anywhere from here, you would just scroll on the actual page. But in watchOS 7, when you go ahead and tap on one of these complications, you can see here, you get like a whole new interface, a whole new menu showing you all the different things you could add as a complication, which is super, super cool. And for example, if we wanted to add weather, if we go ahead and tap on that, and we go ahead and tap again, if we scroll down, you can see we get more within the weather. So we can have like, you know, weather, we have air quality index, conditions, rain, you can add all those different things. And then we also have the more tab right here, which shows, you know, everything that you can add as a complication, which is pretty cool. And we also have a couple new complications here in watchOS 7 as well. So we have astronomy right there. We also have one for shortcuts. We have one for camera remote. 
that's new as well. And then we also have one for sleep tracking as well, which is pretty nice to have so we can do a lot with these complications. Now also if you have an Apple Watch Series 5 with the always on display and it goes to that dim mode, you can now go ahead and tap on the complication while it's dimmed instead of having to tap and then tap again once it wakes up. So you can just tap on one of these complications or tap on any one of these, you know, the timer or anything in the middle right there. You could tap on that straight from when it's dimmed or when you're in sleep mode, which is really nice because you don't have to take an additional step to you know press and wake up the screen and then press on that complication or you know the timer or whatever now we also get a nice new feature for the battery of your apple watch so if we go into our settings and go down you'll see we have a new section here for battery and if we go into battery this will show not only the battery of our watch but also if we go down we have battery health and it shows the maximum capacity just like on iphones so you can see i have 100 percent maximum capacity on my Apple Watch Series 5, and then it describes what that is. And then we also have optimized battery charging here for the Apple Watch. So now we have optimized battery charging for the iPhone, the AirPods, and the Apple Watch now with these new software versions. Now, speaking of health, we also have noise health in watchOS 7 and iOS 14. So of course we have health right here. This is already there in watchOS 6, the environmental sound measurements and things like that. But if we go up, and then go to sounds and haptics and scroll down. You can see right there, we have reduce loud sounds. If you go ahead and tap on that, you can see you could set the decibel level and you can see it says headphone audio will be limited to 85 decibels or as loud as heavy city traffic. And then if you go to your iPhone and go to the health application, you can see we have hearing right here and you see your headphone audio levels, your environmental sound levels, and you can of course have a lot of different graphs and everything in here to make sure that you're not messing up your ears by listening to things too loud or your environment isn't too loud. Now you guys may have also noticed that at the very top of settings, we now have a new section here that was not in watch OS 6 and that is for notifications. And you can see right here, it says notification alerts appear when you're wearing your Apple watch. You won't get alerts on your Apple watch if you're actively using your iPhone. Of course, if we scroll down, you can see you have your notifications indicator, always show short looks, notification privacy, and then also announce messages with Siri, which is now finally on watch OS. Now we also get a redesigned Siri in watch OS 7 to match up with iOS and iPad OS 14. So if you go ahead and invoke Siri, Take a look at that new improved look. And you can see right here, just as a comparison, this is what it looked like in watch OS 6. Here's what it looks like in watch OS 7. And not only that, but Siri is also smarter and it can actually translate text now. So how do you say, how are you in Spanish? In Spanish, how are you is? ¿Qué tal está? How do you say, how are you in Mandarin? In Mandarin Chinese, how are you is? Ni hao ma. So that's super cool that we can translate now straight through Siri on the Apple Watch. That is not something you could do in watchOS 6. Now also you may have noticed that when I was doing that and using the microphone, we got the little privacy thing that popped up on the top. So we do not get the indicator that shows that it was recently used. But if you guys look closely, you would have seen that little orange dot up in the top right. That is the privacy showing that the microphone is being used on our Apple Watch. So I'll show you guys one more time here. Let's go ahead and invoke Siri and take a look at that little orange microphone there indicating that we are using the microphone or at least some application on our Apple Watch is using the microphone. Now going back to that notification center, you guys may have noticed at the very top, we have a clear all button to clear all notifications. And that's because force touch, it looks like is being phased out in watchOS 7, just like 3D touch was for the iPhone last year. So you can no longer force touch on these notifications or anything like that. It is completely gone. And now you just have to click on the clear all button up at the very top to clear all your notifications. Now inside of the workout application, we have some new workouts in watchOS 7. So if we go ahead and scroll down, let's see which one of these are new. So we have the functional strength training, that's new. We also have dance, we have cool down, and we have core training. So all four of those are brand new workouts that you can go ahead and start. So let's just say we wanted to do dance, we can go ahead and start this goal right here and it will begin right now. And this is what the screen looks like. So we get a little animation up there in the top left of somebody dancing. So pretty cool new workouts here in watchOS 7. Now, speaking of working out in health, we also have the new fitness application in iOS 14. So this used to be called activity. It's now fitness on the iPhone, but for whatever reason, it's still called activity on the Apple watch. So hopefully in the next beta that gets better and we have you know fitness instead of activity on the Apple watch. But in here, you can see a slight redesign 
to the application as well. And it looks a little bit better than it did in iOS 13 and watchOS 6. And speaking of workouts, we also have cycling directions added to maps in watchOS 7 and iOS 14. So this is not available in the first beta, but this will be there very soon. And this is something I'm looking forward to as somebody who bikes, not a ton, I'm not like a pro or anything, but I would like to know when there's gonna be a steep hill on a ride or something like that. And now you're gonna be able to see that with the default maps application in iOS and watchOS. Another headlining feature of watchOS 7 is going to be hand washing. So if we go into our settings here and then scroll all the way down, you'll see we have hand washing right here. And this sets a timer. So it says Apple Watch can detect when you're washing your hands and start a 20 second timer. Now I have used this and I've gotten mixed results. It works sometimes, it doesn't work other times. This is the first beta, so that was kind of expected and it's a brand new feature. But you can see here you have haptics as well. So you can turn those on or off. I prefer to have them on just so I know that my Apple Watch is picking up that I'm washing my hands. But this is a super cool feature because you don't have to press anything. Your Apple Watch will just detect when it hears like suds and the motion of your hands moving, it will know that you're washing your hands. And of course, set the timer to make sure you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. And then we also have a corresponding section inside of health for hand washing. So if we go ahead, let's just go ahead and search for hand washing. So you can see right here, hand washing, and I don't have any data right now, but it will show up right here and you can add this to your favorites if you want to go ahead and monitor your hand washing habits. Now going back to the watch face, we have some new additions to the control center here in watch OS 7. So if we go ahead and scroll down, you'll see we have a couple of new toggles here. So we have the bedtime or the sleep tracking toggle right there. Then we also have a toggle for announced messages with Siri. Now also we have the edit button right here and you'll notice something right away. Yes, we can finally delete control center toggle. So for some reason in past versions of watchOS, you cannot delete the toggles in the control center, but now you can delete the ones you don't use. Now I mentioned this earlier, but we do have the shortcuts application now officially on watchOS and watchOS 7. So we have all of the shortcuts that we have on our iPhone transferred over to the Apple Watch and we can run the shortcuts straight from our watch, which is pretty nice. We also have some minor tweaks to the camera or the camera remote application on watchOS. We have the three second timer right there. Then we have the three dots right here. It is a little bit buggy as you can see. It doesn't work all the time. This is the first beta. I can't even tap on that. But you can see right here we have the timer, we have the camera front and rear, we have the flash, we have live photo, HDR, all those right here from the Apple Watch. Now we also got a minor update to the weather application here in watchOS 7. You can see up at the top we have viewing and you can change this to show the temperature, the conditions, or the precipitation by default. So if you wanted it to show precipitation, you can see there it will show all the precipitation for your different locations and you can go ahead and change that if you want to. Inside of the messages application, we have a new button up at the very top and it says new message. So from here, you can go ahead and compose a new message straight from the messages application. Also, if we go ahead back to our messages themselves, if you go ahead and scroll all the way down on a message, you can see you get two new options down here. You can send your location or you can see details of that contact and you can call them, text them, walkie talkie, or email them straight from here. Now we also get a redesign in the wallet application. So if we go ahead and open up the wallet application, you can see here, there is definitely a difference from watchOS 6. Let me pull this up so you guys can see how it looked in watchOS 6. So you can see it shows pretty much the full card now, instead of just these little you know cards behind one another, it shows them individually. And it looks a lot cleaner in my opinion here in this new update. Now also, if you double tap the side button for Apple Pay, you can see you get some new verbiage here and now says no cards or pass and then also at the bottom it says passes sync from the wallet app on your iPhone. So basically just telling you it's not just for Apple Pay, you can use it for transportation passes and things like that. Now also in the timer application, we get a new section down here for recents where it shows your recent timers and not just these pre-selected ones. In the stocks application, we get something similar to what we saw in weather. We have the viewing, so you could change what you want to see by default. You don't have to see the percentage. You could change that to points or market cap right there by default. So now it shows the points or if you wanna see the market cap, it'll show that right there on the right side instead of just being stuck on the percentage. Now also in settings, if we scroll down, you'll see we have app view right here. That is new in watchOS 7. You could do that before, but you had to force press on the home screen. And of course we can't do that now because that's being phased out. So now you have the setting for it inside of settings to change between a grid and a list view. Also, if we go into our accessibility settings, we have a new toggle down here for hearing devices. If we go ahead and tap on that, it will show your hearing devices right here. And then finally, watchOS 7 is significantly smoother and it seems like it's a lot faster than watchOS 6. Definitely the animation. So watch these animations. Look how quick 
I go in between these different applications and let me just go ahead into something more, you know, intensive. So let's go into like App Store or something like that and double press the crown. Take a look at how fast I'm just going between these applications. That is definitely faster than watchOS 6. And just overall, just using the watch, it feels a lot more fluid and fast. So performance was definitely a focus I can tell with watchOS 7. And that's really surprising for a first beta. So I'm really excited to see how this progresses through the beta stages. And of course, when the final comes out, I'm expecting some great performance. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are over 50 new features and changes found in watchOS 7 beta 1. I'm sure there will be more. Make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss when I find more hidden features later on. And of course, I will cover other betas of watchOS in the future as well. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, once again, make sure you guys check out my iPad OS and iOS. And I also have a Mac OS Big Sur video coming out as well. So definitely stay tuned for all those videos. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the support on these videos lately. You guys have been killing it. I really do appreciate it. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.